Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, and uh, it's another dispatch from the attic. I got up super early this morning, was on a plane before the rest of you were even aware of it, and uh, now I'm in Seattle, and I'm going to be here for a couple days, so tomorrow's dispatch, actually tomorrow's dispatch is going to be, um, I'm going to level up on that piece of mixed media I did last time I was here, because it was sitting on the desk when I got here, no one has such a thing. Even the glass of water that I left is still sitting here. So um, it's kind of nice to have a space like that, that you, you know, that you, it's all about what you do with it. Um, but here I am. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be jelly printing today. So I have my jelly printing stuff all laid out. Uh, another phenomenon, of course, is like, I have a new desk space and it's completely cleared off and I'm going to keep it that way. And I'm going to have so much space to do stuff. And I was sitting here juggling trying to put everything down on the table because of course I filled it up as quickly as I could but I do have a space for my gel print my jelly plate I should say there's a nice view it's a cold rainy day outside but proof that it genuinely is an attic <laughs> let's see still trying to get my setup a little perfected here um, but last time I was here, I brought a jelly plate and one of my favorite rollers. I'm using the spongy, you know, those uh, spongy rollers, the more fine art rollers these days. I, um, I really like them. And I have my Liquitex uh, Basics, which is what I have in the shop. I also have just, you know, random paints that I've bought while I'm here. Some of them are from Target. Uh, some of them are from Michaels. And let's see, some of them are from the art store which of course i will go to later um you know for instance i i sell this brand but not this particular tube but i do sell this brand again i do actually sell these little ones so if you want those i sell this this is the so golden um golden so flats this is one of my favorite paints so i have those in the at the store same with this i'm realizing i've got a little bit of a theme going here color wise <laughs> me and my turquoise Let's see, what else? Yeah, so I've got, I've just got, I've got some stuff to grab. I also have a stack of stencils. Um, some of them are the J Tim Holtz ones that you can get at Michael's and Joanne. Um, and some of them are, um, let's see, I'm pretty sure that's actually a Studio Light one. But some of these are Hero Arts. And um, some of you might know I'm working on creating a little more space in the shop. And once I do, I was going to add a little more of the Hero Arts stuff because they've got a nice line of stencils and fun stuff out. So the thing about the ones you can get, the um, Tim Holtz stuff you can get at Michael's and Joanne's, uh, Joanne, is that um, they're basically just half versions of what you can get from me. So I have the whole version of this, the whole version of that. So just FYI. All right. Jabber jabber. I'm going to just get started. My dad's downstairs visiting with some old friends. He's got some very dear friends who, despite my dad's decline, is, have stuck by him and visit him on a regular basis. And it's very touching to see them together. But he is having a ball downstairs, so I don't feel badly about being up here arting with you guys. <laughs> It is a condition of me coming up. I always tell them too that I have to be able to do my lives. Hence, hence the attic, right? So I'm just gonna do a little picking up to start with. Um, I'm just gonna, I've got a lot of paint on there. So I'm just gonna pull some stuff up through my stencils randomly. I saw a really cool jelly print, jelly arts, um, demo today. Drew, oh, I gotta memorize his last name. He's, I've been following him for a while, but he's this artist who does really graphic stuff with his jelly printing, and he was demonstrating how he creates those today. And so, I really recommend if you're if you have the time and are feeling enthusiastic to go and uh, check out Jelly Jelly Arts. Oh, and I can't remember the handle. Anyway. Uh, today's today's uh, post was pretty cool. I think you'll like it. He does these. He's got a really good eye for color. So, of course, now I'm trying to find something awesome. Um, he's got a nice eye for color, and he does these really bold graphic things. He, does, um, he makes his own stencils and resists. 
masks, basically. Okay, that picked up. Sometimes if you wait too long, the brayer, I don't know, I've got brayer marks, will pick up the paint for you. Let's see what this does. Okay. basically brayed off all the blue. Interesting. I wonder how much space would be enough if I had like acres, right? Because I feel like this should be enough space, but it's not. Oop, looks like maybe I should have shaken this pot before I open it. And you know, these do come in, come in pots, which is not perfect, but we'll, we will soldier on. You can tell that these are nice brand new stencils because they are pulling up uh, or creating nice crisp stencil marks. what can happen when you get a meh pull if you then come in and stencil on top of it uh, with something super contrasty and this paint this is the so flat the golden so flats and I have to say loving ooh, can you see the pattern on my on my brayer that's awesome loving how vivid and opaque this is that's hard to do sometimes um, so I'm just gonna actually roll off what's on my brayer onto the plate Fill the page and then I'm going to let it cool a little bit cool dry dry is the word and this is without even shaking it I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm just going to buy a whole house and have my studio in it each room will have a different focus right so we'll have the jelly printing room and we'll have the uh the mixed media room, the collage room, and the, maybe then I'll feel like I have enough space. Cause I genuinely just, I expand to fill the space provided basically as far as I can tell. All right, so this is just what you might think of as the glue, glue layer, just trying to get some down. And uh, gosh, I already like it, just the way it is. It's cool. And these pieces of paper are a little on the big side. Maybe one thing I do is pick up a nine by 12 or smaller, because the, the plate I'm using is an um, eight by 10. Is it? No, it might be a nine by 12, now that I say that out loud. Um, that's kind of cool, a little grungy, got a good look going on there so here's here's a little difference there's a background print and then I pulled the letters separately and this is kind of an all-in-one print you get a little grungier effect not as vivid maybe but still still cool I still like that I'm gonna keep going with that you know how I get sometimes with my stencils I get attached I get attached to my stencils I do one thing I'm gonna do see how the stencil has a lot of green on it and it's wet so I'm just gonna pull that off so that the wet patches don't end up contaminating. I'm gonna use this Liquitex paint. This is a heavy body, so it's very thick. It's their thick, thick paint. Whereas this is basically, that's a medium body, um, even though, you know, so you can pour it. And then a fluid is exactly that. It's, it will pool. So a fluid, when you put it down, runs. All right, so I'm gonna do that thing where I layer up. Is it a different color? Let's 
see how it goes. Just, I love how that rich orange color is working. That's fun. Let's see, what are we gonna do next? Let's, it's funny, I pulled these out, I barely used them. Let's do one of these. One of the turquoises. Dude, I like that. <laughs> I like that yellow and that turquoise together. Look how fun that is. All right, let's go back to this one. Adding some dimension. printing left. Not really, but I do have a lot of uh, ink left on here, ink, paint, so I'm just going to go back and brayer that out and see what happens. Super enjoying this stencil this morning. So it's kind of interesting to see how the different colors are playing with, uh, you know, like that green disappeared in the background, that yellow kind of disappeared, but this green is sitting up on top of it, nice and bright. It's part of what's fun. Um, and I don't know if you can see what's happening on the, you can see when I brayer it out, I'm getting the impression of the, of the stencil. I love that. Um, I have a bit of a ghost print developing here, and so I want to do something a little unusual. I'm going to get a clean piece of paper ready, and I actually have some Mars Black sitting here. Um, this isn't my usual go-to, but I kind of want to see what happens if I use this as a cleanse and see what we can get out of the, the plate. All right, we've got some bright colors down, and See if we can't pull some of those up. So I'm gonna do, because I want this to be a cleansing, I'm gonna cover the whole thing, try and get a nice even, and then I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna really rub it. I'm gonna try to get a really good impression. I think you can see with even just the reflection of the light on the paint before I covered it up with the paper, it was, there was some good stuff going on there. I might even take a sip of my tea while we wait. Oh, do you hear that noise? That is evidence of a good pull. Look at that. That is one of my favorite ghost prints in a while. Nice and grungy, still stuff to look at. That's really fun. I'm excited by that. So, you know, oftentimes when I do my prints, I'm kind of all over the place, right? I'm just doing whatever feels good. I like that, but I also want to add some pop so I'm going to do that but I'm going to do it carefully I'm going to use this because I've been using it and I just want let's see let's make sure this is nice and poppy oh, yeah. you know I gotta get my I gotta get my palette knives out for this let's see what happens if we add a little neon pink I wonder if this is gonna pop the way I want. I have this slightly, sorry, I have this slight dead space here. So I'm just gonna aim for that. So I'm gonna be a little intentional in trying to get this where I want it. Yeah, that worked. Kinda cool. Can everyone see that? All right. Still not 100% what I wanted. I wanted it to really go bam on top. So I am actually gonna pivot and I am gonna play with this. These are stencil, um, stencil, cardboard stencils. What are they called, poster, poster stencils? You know, the ones that you get at um, art stores for and they're super cheap. They're for making posters. 
lettering on posters. So look how fun that's turning out. Already super pretty. Let's see. What do I have? Let's try this. This is... No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. This is the Liquitex fluorescent. It's a thicker body, heavier body um, paint. So let's see how this does. And I can already tell I want a little, the, the you know, these fluorescents do, um, they're translucent basically, so they fade a little bit in that way. Okay, so that's a nice thick application. I'm just gonna let the paint dry on this so that, Um, it's actually when if I let it dry, it will seal the page, the the um, the cardboard a bit, and will keep it, you know, more usable. All right. So again, that didn't completely pop the way I want. I want something nice and opaque. Let me see what I have that I think fits the bill. Uh, you know what I really would love right now is my paper artsies. Those are full on. You can count on those to be opaque and beautiful when I use them. All right, so this is where I'm at right now, looking for something a little brighter to put down. I'm thinking about what I want in the way of a, an image. Let's see, have I used this yellow already? You know what, let's use this. Where was that one that I had out? Very specifically, just trying to get that spot. Boop. Cool. That's fun. Yes, yes, that's what I like. I like that. Throw that down on a couple of different places and see what happens. So you, there you can see this was the thicker application, so it's nice and opaque. This is blending a little bit because it's getting a little uh, muted. I still have lots of paint, so we're just going to reestablish that. And throw down another sample of it. Got a little bit of pattern going on there. I like this. I might come declare this one finished. This one I feel like needs a little more pop. So I think what I'm gonna do, brayer off the yellow. Also pulling off a little ghost print in the back. Um, and I think I'm gonna come back in with a red. Let's see what happens when we add this. We get something fun. Oof, a little too much paint there. That's okay, we'll use it more than once. See how that pops off or pops? on top of that. Let's see where else I put it. Maybe there. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Got still a lot of gungy I'll be honest I didn't even look where I was putting this one because at this point I just cleaned this off a little bit interesting
This is me just getting the paint off of the brayer. And now I've got a little bit of a ghost print that I could pull, or print, maybe, not a ghost print, because it's a little bit of a combination, both. And I'm going to do, nope, let me think about this. I'm still super feeling the alphabet. I'm not sure where I put it. Where did I put your alphabet? One, two... See how this open oh, nope, up that's not open. Let's see how this trickers works. This is fairly thick, as you can tell. Heh, <laughs> didn't even move. My grandpa used to say, never hit a ketchup bottle, and at first none'll come, and then a waddle. I thought that was hilarious when I was little. Aren't little kids cute. Okay, so there's a lot going on on this page now because there's there's the ghost print and now I have this turquoise that I just put down. And so I'm going to, again, see what happens if I use the black to pick it up because I just really liked what I got before, right? So this was my earlier print with the black. Is the paper ready to go? And then I'm just going to dab a little black on. See what I get. lesson. Don't get in my way. I'm jelly printing. Uh, the paint from the stencil. The stencil's getting goopy. <laughs> Kendall is side messaging me. She found a super cool piece of furniture she wants in the store. And I agree, it's absolutely gorgeous. So not quite as satisfying as that first one. Somehow we lost the lettering that I just put in there. So let's reestablish that. We'll come back in. Let's spray her off the black. There's still a cool print, I should notice. Uh, you know, there's a still a lot going on here. There's some interesting texture and yeah, yep, yep. Let's see what happens if we do it with this this time. Put down a nice big glob. Let's see if we can't get that orange to show up a little more stridently. <laughs> no, it just does not want to pop off of that paper or on top of that black. All right, so let's see what I have that might. Ooh, yeah, gold. Let's try some gold. I love the Liquitex gold, so I have high hopes. I think this is an amazing paint, genuinely. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, like just so rich and lots of tint. got a sheen to it hopefully that you can see oh, my hair. and it actually works well with the black there kind of nice I'll roll this out a little bit what happens if I just pick that up the way that was yeah there we go so you know these two I'd say have some potential I mean they all have potential this one, meh, not super into where this one was going. So I'm going to show you something that, um, whoa, <laughs> all right. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> I'm going to show you, um, I have these cardboard uh, 
uh, circles from last time I was here. Um, and I'm just going to cut them up a little bit and show you a little bit of like how that one artist does things because uh, it's super cool. So he creates masks. And what are masks, you might ask? Well, masks are when you take shapes or paper and just cut it into shapes and then use those shapes to mask off parts of your plate, right? I already had these crescents cut. If you were watching any of my art journaling last time I was here, I was experimenting with something that I didn't and ended up not loving and uh, erasing, not erasing, arting over might be the way to think of it. All right, so the jelly print's nice and tacky, so I'm just gonna press this down. And then we are going to, my goal is to literally cover some of this up, so I want a nice opaque color. Looks like I've used this one before. I'm going to put down a generous amount so that I get a nice opaque coverage when I do this. And I don't know if that's what I'm going to get looking at this, but we'll see. If not, I will do it again with another color and re reprint. And you just pull the masks away. The trick is to try and get it so you, without damaging the edges you have going on and then you take your print that you want to print over and you this is where having a registration tool could be really helpful you can also make one i should just make one all right please don't suck let's see what it looks like ah, that's not so bad <laughs> that red just went straight up through that green that's really interesting it almost looks like it's on top of it um, but this is sort of the way that, uh, this guy drew does his stuff. It's sort of bold, graphic, sh lots of shapes, um, lots of energy that way and, and very bold colors that he's using. So, um, I, this is actually kind of fascinating how this one worked out together. I'm going to do another one and I'm going to use, um, I actually really like how these shapes turned out. They're super cool. Put those down again. Stick, 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 please stick. Okay. And this time I'm actually going to print onto my plate. Uh, the my brayer clen cleansing plate. I'm gonna use this purple. This is dioxin, dioxin, dioxin purple, dioxin, dioxin, dioxin purple. Wants to get in on the action. Anyway, this is a Liquitex color. Their colors are named for their actual tints. That sound that I'm hearing in the background is just the water clunking in the pipes because I'm in the attic. <laughs> Hoping it's not someone trying to get a hold of me. Because there's no one here to do that. Okay, let's see what happens when I just clunk this down over it and pick that purple up. quite the dramatic results that he got this one now feels like a hot mess <laughs> but that doesn't mean I can't do stuff with it right that there's not more I think that this was more successful in terms of the contrast this one again I need to find a nice opaque paint um I actually really like this now that I look at it again it, it now it's sort of come together it's got these fun elements to it and I almost like it 
on its own. You know, I, there's a little story here in terms of how these are interacting. And then I have this one, which I feel like I could do a little more with. And I have this one, which I feel is the most successful. And I have this one, which will be a good background to jelly print with next time. But uh, I think in the end, this was my most successful one right here. So, all right. That's me proving that no matter where you are, you can still try to jelly print, still be creative. Jelly printing is actually a super easy one, right? Because all you need is the brayer, the paint, and the jelly plate, and some paper. And honestly, the paper could be anything. I could have just reached around and taken paper off the shelves in this place. Old tax returns. <laughs> we certainly don't need them anymore. And I could have jelly printed onto those. So uh, lots of ephemera to use in, uh, in places like this, uh, but also whatever kind of paint you have on hand. So really the only uh, equipment you actually need is the jelly plate and the, the brayer. Um, if you're in the Seattle area, you're kind of stuck going to Michael's and Joanne's for that. If you're in uh, Chatsworth, you can come to the shop and pick some up there. We have all the sizes. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me today. Uh, tune in tomorrow for another, another Dispatch from the Attic. I will be mixed media art journaling. All right, everyone. See ya. Nope. That's wrong. <laughs>